Well, hello, and thanks for stopping in to learn a little bit about two historic buildings located in Mount Healthy's City Park that serve as our History Museum complex. These two buildings are the Free Meeting House, constructed to be a shared house of worship in 1825, and the Toll House, which once stood along our main street when that road, Hamilton Avenue, was a toll road, the Cincinnati and Hamilton Turnpike. We'll start with the Free Meeting House. European settlers acquired land here in the late 1700s, and the town of Mount Pleasant, which was our first name before we became Mount Healthy, was laid out in 1817. It was a tiny town just a couple of blocks wide and long and centered on the road connecting Cincinnati with Hamilton, Ohio. Before church buildings were erected, religious gatherings were held in the cabins of the early settlers of Mount Pleasant. It's likely they were served by circuit-riding preachers. As the population expanded, there was a need for something more spacious. In 1825, a town lot was sold to the trustees of the newly formed Mount Pleasant Union Meeting House Association in consideration of the sum of $25. A meeting house was built, and the association set forth 11 articles by which its use was to be governed. Among them, the meeting house shall be for the use of all. If at any time two or more appointments should happen on the same day and time, the preachers when meeting may agree, but if neither will give way, they must determine which of them shall have the use of the meeting house by having lots cast for the same. The meeting house was used by many denominations. Its principal occupants for the first few years were the United Brethren and the Presbyterians and occasionally it was used by Universalists, Disciples of Christ, or the Christian Church, Swedenborgians, Restorationists, Old School Baptists, and Mormons. Even though Mount Pleasant was small in population, it was rich in religious diversity. By the late 1830s, early 1840s, the common worship space gave way to individual congregations building their own places of worship. The Free Meeting House took on a new role as a center for political gatherings, notably among them during the 1840s, the local and county conventions of the Ohio Anti-Slavery Society and of the Liberty Party. Report on the Anti-Slavery Convention from the 9th of March, 1844 Philanthropist. This was one of the most large, interesting, and enthusiastic liberty meetings ever held in the county. We hail it as an indication of the rapid progress of our principles. At an early hour on one of the loveliest days of the spring, the people began to assemble. They came up from every direction. The country sent up its farmers. Sharon was there. Burlington sent her sons and daughters. Mill Creek was never better represented. And Cincinnati, ever favoring Mount Pleasant, gave her on that day the flower of her Liberty Regiment. The ladies were as usual foremost in the good work. There were assembled courage and loveliness, manhood and woman. The interest of the evening meeting was much increased by the attendance of the Mount Pleasant Musical Band. At the close of each speech, it played one of those glorious airs dedicated the world over to Liberty. I must not forget to add that the usual hospitality of the citizens of Mount Pleasant was extended to the strangers present. Our horses and ourselves were well taken care of, and our hope in parting from our kind hosts was that we might be able to spend many more happy days at Mount Pleasant Liberty Meetings. In subsequent decades, the Meeting House served as a site for other local political conventions. The building served also as the Village Council Chambers after Mount Healthy was incorporated in 1898. Other various and sundry uses were made of the building over the years, such as the town jail and as a place for holding livestock. Eventually, the meeting house fell into disuse. In the early 1960s, some far-sighted community members recognized its value as part of the town's history and launched a campaign to preserve the meeting house. The effort truly was community-wide. Dear Mount Healthian, 
Here is a picture of what we hope to do, with your help, of course. Preserve a bit of local history and establish a museum where students and all persons interested can have, through collected articles, written records, and personal effects, a glimpse of life as it was in this area from the early years of 1800. We are now at about the halfway point, financially speaking, and we are counting on the citizens of Mount Healthy and the friends of this project to help us over the finish line. We think you will agree that when finally established, this museum will be a very definite asset to the community at large. Situated in the civic center of Mount Healthy, attractively painted and landscaped, then furnished with historical items, surely it will be something you will be proud to tell others about as a worthwhile addition to your town's attractions. Contributions of any size will be gratefully appreciated. They can be sent in the envelope provided, which is properly addressed and needs only your stamp. Thank you, the committee. The community chipped in and raised not the roof, but the entire building. It was hoisted onto a flatbed and carefully driven the two blocks to its new site at the city park. It was a proud moment when the cornerstone laying ceremony took place on May 30th, 1966. Since then, the building has served as Mount Healthy's History Museum. The Historical Society's archives resides in the basement. A collection of all sorts of items of interest and local value is on display both on the ground level and downstairs, items that serve as reminders of bygone ways of life. The Historical Society offers an open house on the first Sunday of each month for the public to stop in and take a tour. We host an annual Christmas open house. And during the school year, tours, tours for school groups. In Mount Healthy's bicentennial year of 2017, it was the base of operations for a day of living history. We treasure this building and are proud of its historical connections with the abolitionist movement and all that has transpired since. Next on our tour is the Toll House, built in 1859 for use when our main street, Hamilton Avenue, was a privately owned turnpike. This building too was moved to its current location next to the Free Meeting House in the 1960s and it serves as an adjunct to the museum proper. Most Tuesday and Saturday mornings, you will find there some of the Historical Society members, mostly old timers with lots of stories of their own to tell. Here's a little history on toll houses. After Ohio became a state in 1803, there was increasing public pressure for roads. Because it couldn't afford to build roads to satisfy every Ohio community, the state granted franchises to turnpike companies. These private enterprises were given the right to erect toll gates and charge fees in exchange for promising to keep their roads in repair. The Ohio General Assembly adopted a turnpike law in 1809 and passed major revisions in 1817 and 1836. One of the 1836 changes permitted the state to invest in the private road companies a factor that spurred formation of new companies in the 1830s and 1840s. Turnpike tolls were set by the state. 
Here's a list of the tolls at the time our toll house operated. The toll houses along the Cincinnati and Hamilton Turnpike, now Hamilton Avenue in Cincinnati, were spaced every two miles. This toll house was in the heart of Mount Healthy, just at the north end of our business district. Charles Cheney was living in Mount Healthy when he became president of the Cincinnati and Hamilton Turnpike. From Charles and his wife Waitstills, letters to her father in 1837. Dear Father, Charles is hard at work about our turnpike to the city. He is president of the board of directors and has given it a deal of time and trouble. They have got it now under contract and in part graded. We'll probably get it all ready this year for the stone. All roads in this country must be macadamized to be good. The soil is of such a nature, so clay, it is hardly possible for you, accustomed to the good roads of New England, to imagine of what importance this is to us. The winter lays an absolute embargo on us. No one thinks of riding unless obliged to. We have so little cold, the road is never frozen long enough to do us good. We have nothing but mud, and such mud too you know nothing of. So Charles has lent himself, soul and body, to the accomplishment of this great enterprise, and perhaps by the time you make us the wished-for visit, we may have a good road for you to ride over. Your welcome letter of the 13th has remained on hand, unanswered for nearly a week, but I have been obliged to be about much of late upon the business of our Macadam Road. We have finally got it in a fair way of accomplishment, and when done, it will add greatly to our convenience and increase the value of our farms very much. Tis about 17 miles long and will cost from 100 to $110,000. It connects at Hamilton with another road of the same kind, which runs to the Great National Road. Instead of a weekly mail on horseback, we expect in another year to see a half dozen stages passing us daily. Free passage over the toll road was granted to members of the militia going to and from points of muster, funeral processions, and worshippers going to and from places of worship. There were provisions in the tax law of that day which stated a portion of that due for taxes might be paid in the cracking of rock and repairing of a given section of the road. Other laws provided a stiff penalty for evading the toll gates by any subterfuge such as passing through adjacent farmland or on a devious route with the intent to defraud the road company. The free passage for funeral processions has an important connection with the Underground Railroad in at least one known local case. The well-documented escape of 28 fugitives from slavery in 1853 made good use of this legal allowance as the group traveled in the guise of a funeral procession as they made their way north from Cincinnati. The group successfully made it all the way to Canada. Charles Cheney was also active with the Underground Railroad in Mount Healthy and participated in Liberty Party conventions in the Free Meeting House. Charles's son Frank wrote many years later that, while his father was president of the Turnpike Company, he had control over the hiring of tollkeepers and it was remarkable how uncommunicative these gatekeepers were about having seen anybody on the road at night and with the suggestions they had to make that the parties that were being looked for must have taken one of those bypaths down by the foot of the hill so as to avoid paying toll. Son Frank had gone along on a number of those midnight carriage rides with freedom seekers as passengers and knew the value of a sympathetic tollgate keeper to throw pursuing bounty hunters off the track. After the toll house's cultural and historical value was recognized and the building saved and moved to its present spot, a group of old timers of Mount Healthy would gather there for fellowship and to trade stories of the old days. The group came to be known fondly as the Toll House Gang. They strictly maintained a rule that no women were allowed entry to the Toll House during their get-togethers. One by one, those old men have passed, 
and with them many of the stories of the old days of Mount Healthy. One of the present-day trustees of the buildings, Dave Huser, used to sit with the old men and soak in their stories. Dave, now almost an old-timer himself, is a walking encyclopedia of stories of Mount Healthy history. After the pandemic, if you visit us, you just might get to hear Dave tell some of his stories. Thanks for visiting and taking the time to learn a little bit about Mount Healthy's history. We look forward to seeing you in person sometime in the future. Until then, stay healthy.